Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to dig into this Eager One mower. This was found with the Toro, which is actually running great. Uh, so we're going to move that one out of the way. And we're going to take a look at this one. Now this is the Eager One uh, Tecumseh engine. Uh, I believe it's a vector carburetor. Uh, which I see a lot of people complaining about uh, but we're going to do this a different way today I'm going to try to clean the carb while it's on the mower uh, just a basic cleaning and then see if it's actually just going to start without cleaning everything first uh, and then we'll go from there uh, it does have a little bit of rust on the deck but that's something that can be repaired uh, not a big deal it is a power gear drive, 22 inch, EZ3, and I believe it's from the 90s. Uh, so it could be a challenge, but maybe it'll run, maybe it won't, but we're going to find out. Okay, so we have our eager one, and pardon the pun, but I'm eager to find out if we can get this thing running. It is from the 90s, I believe. Um, we got this kind of a strange air filter set up here. Uh, I did take some of it apart already. Uh, this top cover and just some screws, uh, just to make it a little faster. I think we're going to do is first check this condition of the spark plug here and see if we can't get the spark first. But the plug itself doesn't look bad. I mean, there's no rust on it or anything. It's really not that bad of condition. I am going to clean it though on the wire wheel. So I'm going to do that now. Only take a few minutes. All right, the spark plug's been cleaned up, uh, and the wire wheel came out good. Didn't need much, uh, so I'm just going to leave this on the end of this cable here, and I'm going to set it against the engine somewhere. And we're going to try to crank it over and see if we can see a spark here. But I'm going to set up the uh, set up the camera a little bit closer to the spark plug and we'll take a look at it. Alright, I've zoomed into the plug here and I'm just going to try to crank it over and I did make it a little bit darker. Uh, so hopefully we'll see a spark there. But we'll give it a shot here. seeing anything there. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on the sparking. so we don't have a spark. Alright, so we're going to get a look at this, uh, the internals here uh, by removing this cover. Now I had already done some preliminary work just to make it easier. Uh, but you're going to have uh, this cover on top with the one screw here in the rear. And then you're going to have you know, typical bunch of uh, screws all the way around. I'm using a 10 millimeter here. I'm just gonna 
unhook my bungee cord I had for the engagement. Just a temporary hold there. And we'll get this cover off and take a look at the coil. slightly over. There's our recoil and we have our uh, coil right here. Let's get a look at that. You can see the coil here. Uh, it does have a little bit of rust on it. Okay, I'm using a quarter inch socket with an extension. Let's get these two screws off here and we'll get a look at this thing I always try to put the screws back in the holes so you don't lose them that way you always know where they are so now there's our wire you know, there could be a bad connection there as well. So we're just going to unhook that wire for now. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Well, you can see it's pretty caked up with, uh, with garbage here. I mean, that could be part of the issue. We're going to find out. We're going to clean this up as best we can get it nice and shiny again and hook our wire back up and maybe we'll get some spark. Alright so here's our coil after we've ran it through the uh, brush wheel here and you can see what a difference I mean you couldn't even see this center one before uh, it was just caked with oil on here uh, so we went through cleaned it up it's a nice shape now will it be enough we're going to find out in a minute. Okay, I've put the coil in place here, and it is a magnet, so it's gonna you're gonna to have to pull this back. And I, I, what I like to do is put the screws in, but don't tighten them all the way. And you can take a business card, insert a business card, and that should be enough space there, um, enough gap between the coil and the wheel there. Now I can tighten them down. And as you pull the card out, this should turn. And it's turning properly. And it, you see I did clean it, this part up as well. Uh, so, I think what we're going to do is put the top back on. Let me turn this light off. And hopefully we'll get something here. Let's find out. Still not seeing anything there. I mean, it's possible we have a uh, ground wire issue. We we'll have to take a look at that, or the switch. Uh, when you engage the wire, there's going to be usually a kill switch. There could be an issue there. I mean, uh, if there was an issue, we could bypass it temporarily uh, just to uh, see if we can't get it working. But I don't see anything. And that's a shame. 
but let's dig a little bit more into it. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. This is an old lawnmower and uh, was probably thrown out for a reason. Uh, so let's continue on with it uh, and see what we can come up with. Okay, so what I've done is I've put the cover back on and uh, what I've done here is unhook the ground wire from the coil. So uh, we're going to see if there's an issue with the switch somewhere in here. Um, I'm going to try to crank it over a couple times and we'll see now that I've unhooked that uh, wire uh, which has a lot to do with the engagement system on the handle uh, obviously so that when you let go of the handle the mower will shut off so it's pretty important uh, safety feature so let's get a look and see now if we have spark so we can rule out the coil I see the spark there definitely have spark which is good news uh, so that pretty much narrows it down to the uh, there's got to be a switch in here and maybe it's just dirty because I've been pulling out just a bunch of crud out of there um, so we're gonna get the cover back off and see if we can't find out where that problem is uh, so we're gonna get to that next okay so through troubleshooting we know that the coil is okay and unfortunately with this specific engine for some reason they decided to run the kill wire underneath it seems to be going underneath the flywheel somewhere it's not something I really wanted to do but uh, we're gonna have to take this flywheel off to get to this under this plate here so we can get to everything it probably wouldn't hurt anyway because it, it needs a good cleaning and we can get a good look at the uh, the seal underneath as well. So the first thing you want to do, and this is actually the first time I've taken one of these off this kind of engine. Uh, typically with another engine you could take a hammer on the thick parts. You know this plate wouldn't be here. And you could tap, lightly tap and while rotating and also by uh, tap this top. Uh, the three quarter inch socket put a piece of wood under to lock the blade. Uh, you don't want to stick something in here. This is actually a plastic uh, it's for cooling as it turns. So they decided to use a plastic uh, piece for that. So I'm just going to remove this bolt. It's not too hard to remove. I'm going to remove these. I already loosened this up. But uh, that was done by putting a piece of wood, jamming a piece of wood uh, underneath to keep the blade uh, locked up. So once you get that bolt off then that's going to come off and then of course the plastic uh, piece is going to come off. So now here's where the challenge lies. We're going to have to tap this while well, using a pry bar. Now I'm going to use this kind of pry bar just lightly rotate it and, and just keep doing that around as I'm tapping this. Now hopefully we'll have some luck. 
I did put some uh, penetrating oil here. Uh, this is only if you didn't have a puller. Obviously a puller would make it easier. But uh, we don't have one now, so you got to make do with what you have. So we're going to work at this and we're going to see if we can't get this loose and get to seeing where the uh, the kill switch actually is on this. Because once we figure that out, uh, we can get this uh, handle working properly and then we can move on to the next step and hey maybe it'll run maybe it won't but we're gonna find out Alright, so we got it off. It wasn't too bad. Now you can see now with that green wire. Let's get a good look at it here. It's pretty dirty in there. Pretty weird design here. But here's the green wire. And it is very dirty in here anyway, so we're going to have to clean that up. So we have the brake here we can look at we can uh, clean this up now looks like we might have a s leak there in the seal so that would have to be replaced so now is uh, the time where you weigh out your options is it worth you know it's an old mower you know it's, it's fun to play with and uh, fun to figure things out but I do see some oil coming off there I'd have to look into how much a seal would cost for that. Uh, but here's our wire, and uh, now we should be able to remove this plate here, which uh, will be easily uh, accessed. It'll be easy to get in there and kind of look at it. So that's where we are now, and uh, I got some other things to do, so I'm going to do that, and we'll continue with this. Uh, later so uh, let's move on to the next step uh, like I said uh, you know this shouldn't be soaked with oil here uh, obviously there's an issue there okay so we spent some time cleaning up this mower and we did uh, uh, clean up the ground wire here and the switch uh, and you can see how this operates when you pull the handle it's going to pull this back and you can see how the brake runs on the inside similar to a uh, automobile uh, with a, a rotor brake system um, which is kind of strange uh, that's why I had to pull that off to get to that uh, switch there uh, but you can see how that operates there and when you reach a certain point uh, this metal point here is going to separate from here and that will allow it to start so when it's not started uh, it's actually grounded so here we have the motor we cleaned it up uh, like when when I do work I like to be detailed about it uh, so even if I repaired a part and there was a an oil mess inside I'd clean it up that's just the right thing to do uh, I think my original assumption was that this was from the 90s but doing a little research it appears it's possibly from 2002 uh, it is a vector carburetor uh, we'll get a look at the uh, model number here if we can it's a Sears and there's the information there see the engine has been cleaned up uh, I, I, you know I still haven't ran it so I don't know the history behind it uh, but it's important to go through all the systems and make sure they're functional and uh, 
mainly what we've done today is we've gone through the ignition system and we've cleaned that all up and we verified it had spark and it does have spark and we removed the uh, flywheel and uh, to get to the switch and uh, it's kind of a good thing I cleaned it all up here um, I don't think the leak on that seal is a very serious one I think it's something that's been going on over time uh, so I do believe this engine's going to run uh, it does have a Tecumseh engine and the model number is 143.976600 which is a VLV66 502507B and from the research that I've done it is compatible with uh, VLV40 so a lot of the parts that come up uh, also work with the VLV40 and this oil seal uh, is a model number 36010 alright so I'm curious to see if this is going to run uh, I did clean up the magnet here and we clean that wheel up nicely we have everything else cleaned up here uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, stick a piece of wood under the blade I'm going to make sure this plug is unhooked first just to be safe and we're just going to put this uh, flywheel back on and basically it'll tighten down with just the nut you're not going to need to do any pounding or anything like that so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start that and we'll get this thing back together uh, maybe get some gas in it uh, maybe run some gas through the carb I don't really want to take it apart right now I want to see if in the state that it's in now if it'll run alright so we're just going to proceed here to put this on there's a slot here and there's a keyway and we're going to slip it on and we want to make sure that we move this brake here inward so we'll use this because uh, that rides on the inside so let's go ahead and put that on there and we'll go ahead and put our cover on like that and we'll put this piece washer and of course the uh, nut here and uh, we'll get our wood put in, in the uh, blade to lock it up and we'll get our wrench and then we'll start tightening it down and it should tighten down uh, pretty nicely okay so we put our cover back on uh, you just want to make sure the flywheel isn't rubbing when, if you turn it by hand uh, because there are some things that run underneath that flywheel uh, I hooked up the linkage and there's two uh, screws here that hold this plate on and you just want to as, at an angle stick it the, uh, the cable in there so the cables hooked up so the next thing now uh, there are one two three on the other side and four of these bolts that hold this on not a big deal pretty straightforward so now what we want to do for the gas tank is there's going to be a uh, I don't know what your hanger there maybe you want to call it and there's a slot here and you want to take your dipstick off and line it up in there and just press it down Okay, so uh, before I start this thing up, I wanted to check some other things out. And you can see the tires are, you know, they do have some wear on them, but uh, they're still usable. It looks like somebody, you know, maybe did a lot of use over uh, concrete with it. You know, maybe keeping it engaged over concrete. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is, but it's, you know, it's still got enough. The tires aren't 
damaged in any way. They're just a little bit bald. Uh, we're not going to a car show with this thing, you know, we're just mowing some grass, so I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, they can easily be replaced. Uh, but we are going to go in there and check out the gears and, uh, and, and uh, lubricate what we need to do in there. I'm just curious if this drive is going to work or not. Um, so I'm going to open this up and we'll kind of get a look inside and see what's going on in here because when I run it I'd like to you know run the drive and see if that's functioning but I can get a look at the belt here and see what shape it's in and there's going to be a little tab on the front you just push in as well pretty long screw there and what wow I mean this thing is that is completely packed with grass someone really didn't take very good care of this one we're gonna have to get all of this grass out of here now the belt itself, I mean, doesn't look like it's horrible. I think we can just clean this up and get the grass out of here. And, uh, yeah, the belt doesn't look too bad. You know, hopefully the transmission there works. I'd like to, I'll clear some of this out here and then I'll try the handle. It's got kind of that weird handle. It's like a, a kind of like a race car handle or something. You would think it'd be kind of weird when you're doing the grass to have to push that kind of like a shift stick like a shifter that's a lot of grass in there I mean there is some appears to be some oil on the grass I don't know hopefully it's not coming from this transmission here but I've worked on it before it's not too too tough you just take it apart you can uh, you know maybe there's a gasket in there that's leaking or something or maybe this is just accumulated over time no one ever cleaned this out so there's a lot of grass just stuck in here What I'm going to do is uh, get a rag or something and try to wipe this down here. I'm going to try the shifter. Let's see if that at least moves. Well, that works kind of different. This is stationary. Usually they move to create the tension. I'm not quite sure how that one works there, but it probably just engages inside and it just keeps the same tension there. It just turns and kind of like a clutch in there is what it seems like. But I'm going to continue to clean this out and uh, if this thing's going to run then we'll be able to uh, actually engage it and see if it works so much better wouldn't you say everything's all cleaned out of there uh, so we're going to put the cover back on we'll tighten it up here and now uh, move on to the next phase Alright, so we're going to move on to the next step here. Uh, 
on our mission here to see if this is going to run. Now, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with it. So, like I said, I have a lot of mowers. Uh, but I at least like to know if the thing runs. Uh, but what we have here is a vector carburetor. I've never actually seen one in person. Uh, so it's kind of different. It has like a plastic bowl and it's held on by a retaining clip. Uh, this here, this cover, basically was on here and these two bolts go there so that's pretty easy to get off. Kind of a weird setup. The air filter is on the front. Uh, we'll set that to the side. First thing I'm going to do is just take this off. There's two bolts there. It's a quarter inch just so I could have a little more room here to work. But it's a super, super hot day. It is breezy though, which is nice. Let's get this cable off here just to make a little more room. You can see it a little better. So we do have these two posts that hold this on, and it's a Torx, uh, Torx driver, but you can get away with using a very small uh, socket fits on there so you can get them out. So we'll remove these bolts, uh, these nuts first, and second thing we're going to have to do is I did clean the tank and I put a little gas in it, tried to start it. It will start for a few seconds if I spray some carb cleaner in here. I thought maybe I could take a run and see if it would just run, but unfortunately it's not. So we have a fuel delivery issue, so we're going to go through that system now. So first thing I want to do is take this clip off and slide it down. I'm going to try to pinch this fuel line here. I'm just going to use these here, these needle nose, and just a pair of vice grips. I'm going to kind of use them to hold, to pinch it. So if you don't have a, a hose crimper or a pincher, it's, it's perfectly fine. This should work. You don't want it too tight. Just get them on there. Just good enough where the gas isn't going to leak out. That'll probably be pretty good. Now I'm going to need another set of pinchers here so I can twist this hose off of here. under there just in case. There we go. Now I'm hoping we don't have an obstruction in here either. We can test that. Just by letting that go into a jar. So, uh, move on to the next step. Alright, so I'm just going to let off this clamp a little bit. Just, I'm going to see if gas comes out here. See if we make sure we have flow from the tank to the carburetor. And you can see that I do have gas coming out, so we're good there. So we'll just leave that right there. Uh, so what's probably happening is there's something wrong with the bowl, the float is stuck something with the flow in here so we're going to have the joy of uh, of removing this carburetor this vector so we're going to put our small socket in there to remove these posts and then we do have a linkage there we're going to have to unhook Get 
take these off. There we go. We'll set these aside here. I don't know. There we go. That wasn't too bad. There is appears to be a gasket there. There was a gasket. Yeah, there it is. It's like a paper. We're just going to turn the carburetor. So we can slide this off of here. So there we have our vector. And there is some gas coming out of it, so that tells me some gas got to it. It could be a jet issue. Uh, but uh, we're going to get this on my work tray, some carb cleaner, uh, take it outside, and uh, let's see what we can do with it. All right, so we have our carb here and some cleaner and uh, I left the gasket on there just want to be very careful I don't want to rip this thing off but I'm gonna watch when I spray and try not to overload it with uh, carb spray it might break it down uh, I could easily probably make one uh, as well but uh, first let's get inside of here I'm gonna take this clip off it's kind of a weird design take this retaining clip off of here get a look inside this vector that's kind of a pain already I gotta get this side off. There we go. There's our clip. Let's open this up. That's kind of different. It's got this plate here. It's our plate. So you'll see, you'll want to have that, you'll see the, the grooves in here. It's going to fit this way, so I'm going to leave that here. There's our float. There is a jet here. I think there might be a spring in there, so I want to be careful here. Yep, there's a spring in there. There's your spring. That goes first. So, it does look a little dirty. I'm going to give that a good spray. The spring will go in first, then the jet. As far as this goes, It just clips out of there. I think I just gotta lift this up. Okay, I'll use these. That's it. There we go. So there we have our float, and there's a pin here. It actually just presses in, into there. So we'll set that there. There should be a needle. Oh, there it is. I didn't even see that. So this is like a metal needle. It doesn't have the rubber on the end. Actually, it doesn't look too bad there. I think we'll take this drain plug off.
there is another spring. Alright, so I think we're ready to uh, start spraying this thing. Gotta watch your eyes. Looks good. I'm also going to get a piece of wire, just a piece of uh, copper wire, like an ethernet wire or anything like that, very small, small enough to fit in there and just kind of poke through whatever I can, make sure it's clean. So let me get, let me get a wire and uh, come back to it. Alright, so I'm just using some ethernet wire here. I have a ton of it and I'm just going to take one strand of it out and just kind of strip off some of it just like that so now we have something we can use to ream out some of these holes here make sure they're clear you can do the same thing with the jet this is just plastic. That looks good. So overall it doesn't look too bad here. Get my pin. There it is. Goes through the float. We'll set it in there. Then I'll just use the screwdriver to kind of snap each side in. Alright, that's in there. Now we could put this, it looks like it might have a kind of a hole in it. I'm just going to check this piece that goes into the drain plug. It's got the red kind of plastic on the end of it. And that hole is clear. That'll go in there, the red part first. Then our drain plug. Good enough. Now we have our spring first. And then the jet with the uh, O ring, which is looks like new, it's in good shape. Put that in there. That should be good enough there. And of course our it's like a gasket. We'll clean it up a little.
can't get this wrong because it has the shape. So that would be this way. Just like that. this way. Right. Then we got to press it in there. Then we got to put this clip back on. I'm going to go from this side. in the bottom groove. One side. Oh, I almost went in there. Come on. bottom of this to press it swivel. There we go. That's good there. I might give it a couple tabs. So that appears to be good. The gasket's still intact. happy with the way this is fitting in this hole here. It's definitely in there. I don't think it's going anywhere. All right. So we got it back together. It wasn't too bad. We're going to pop it back on the mower and see what happens. Alright, so I'm going to prime it a few times and uh, you know we're approaching the time to where starting a lawnmower may not be appreciated, let's say, let's put it that way. So I'm going to do what I have to do now. If it doesn't start, I'll continue to work on it, but uh, 
I'm going to prime it a couple times and let's give it a go. As you can see, we got other issues there. A bunch of oil came spewing out of the motor. Alright guys, so on this channel we don't give up. So I'm back at this motor and we're going to figure this thing out. Um, what we had was, as you've seen, when I had started it there was oil coming down here. Now the only place that could come from is from this cover here. And I'll show you what I mean. This is the breather system from Tecumseh which is on the top of the motor but it's also a lubrication for the uh, upper bearing. And you can see the cover here. And you can see inside there which I've already cleaned up. You have a tube here that's uh, probably just air passes out of. Um, there's no uh, tube uh, connected to it. It's just kind of hanging out of the side of the motor over here. Now there was no oil leaking over here and there was no oil on this bearing. Uh, so it definitely was not coming from there. Um, in fact, I didn't see any oil on that bearing, so that might be fine. Um, what you have here is kind of seems like a check valve. There's a rubber. You know, you can see the holes. There's holes underneath, then you have that rubber. So that tells me that it allows things to go through, but not to return back in. Now, there are a bunch of holes. There's a hole here. See if I can get a little closer. You can see this tiny hole here. There's a bunch of drain holes for oil. Uh, there's a hole right on the side here. And that's for the uh, upper bearing. Um, so those, if uh, you know, I've already cleaned them out. Um, that could have been part of the problem. Well, there also was a filter. You can see the bottom of this cover here, which the gasket doesn't look terrible. You know, I've looked up uh, this part, and uh, it's the same exact part, but this is flat, the gasket. There's nothing, you know, this is kind of, you can see it's raised up kind of bubbled, uh, but the ones I've seen uh, are just a flat gasket there, and they don't have a filter here, and I'll show you what I mean, um, if I can find it here, I'm going to have to, oh, here it is, so this piece of, I guess what you would call a filter was stuck on here, now I don't see this part with that filter. I don't see it at all. So what might be happening is this filter is so old 
that it's no longer filtering but acting as a blocker and not allowing the oil to flow freely. Um, what I am going to do is clean this oil um, because although I did check the level, you know, having too much oil in the motor can cause that to happen as well. Um, but certainly if something was obstructing the flow of the oil, it's going to take the path of least resistance. Uh, so what I did was, since the new part that I would order, if I needed it, didn't have this, I just removed it because it's, it's trashed anyway. And I always keep clean oil in the motors that I'm working on anyway. Uh, and we are going to drain it. Um, but this is basically what it looks like underneath. Now this cover here can be taken off and I already took it off because I cleaned underneath. I cleaned all the oil. So the engine looks just as shiny uh, down below here as it does up on top. You know I always like to be detailed and clean. Uh, when I had come back to this after I had started it and taken it apart there was no oil up here. Now you notice too I did take this on the grinder it looks brand new this cover here uh, the breather cover uh, but there was no oil up here there was no oil at all it was only running down the side of the motor so that could only come from here uh, so before I replace this I think what I'm gonna do is since I've cleaned up uh, these air these holes here for drainage and for the oil and remove that uh, old filter that's in there which might have been blocking uh, the flow of oil uh, maybe to the bearing or to, you know uh, who knows what was going on there but we'll check the level put it all back together uh, put some fresh oil in there and uh, I think it's going to be good but we're going to see we're going to find out and if necessary uh, then I probably would order this. Uh, it comes with this cover and the gasket. I think I saw it for I don't know, it was six dollars so it's very cheap. Uh, that's the thing with these motors there's parts available for them. Uh, so that's the update here. Now these bolts if you want to take this cover off you know you're gonna have one bolt here you're gonna have a bolt that holds this kind of this protective metal cover right here and then you've got a bolt here that holds this top off top on I mean you can I don't want to remove it now but that's where the uh, ground wire runs below it and uh, that's where we're at right now. Alright guys, so we put everything back together um, and we're going to try to fire it up again. I checked the oil. Seems fine. The level's fine. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. I just want to see if it's going to be leaking again. So uh, we're going to mount this up, fire it up, and let her run and we'll see what happens.
right, so it ran great. Uh, I did not see any oil coming out. It's, you know, there was a little bit of smoke from what had happened before, just the excess oil that was burning off. Uh, so what I had done seemed to do the trick. I guess if it doesn't do the trick for you, you can try that cover uh, with the gasket. Uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to making more videos with my finds. Uh, if you liked it, hit like, subscribe uh, for future videos, and uh, see if we can't get this channel up to a thousand subscribers. That would be uh, it's probably my goal at this point. Uh, but thank you to all the new subscribers, and uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Yeah.